What's wrong with authors? Why do you hate me? Oh, you're kind of far away. Oh no! It's still Joe, you know what I mean? And the things they did not speak of began to outweigh the things that they did. Each secret, each unspoken thing was round and hard and heavy and cold, like a stone hung around the necks of both grandmother and girl, their backs bent under the weight of secrets. So I'm now halfway done with uh, The Girl Who Drank the Moon, which I talked about the beginning of it in the last vlog, so super fast. Village of People, every year they sacrifice a daughter, a young, a, no, not a daughter, a child. Every year they sacrifice a baby um, to the witch that lives in the forest to keep her at bay, to keep her ire at bay. But in reality, the witch doesn't know why they're sacrificing these babies. She doesn't understand what's going on. She is not, there's nothing to sacrifice to her. So she just takes the babies and finds them a nice home. Except for Luna, our main character, who, as she's traveling with her, Luna drinks the moon, which magic ma gives her magic. But that doesn't, it's too much magic. So anyway, Luna lives with Zan, the witch and a little giant who, a, li a little dragon who thinks he's a giant and a monster and it's just a bunch of charming creatures. And we're following Zan's perspective as well as Luna's perspective as well as a boy who is, he was training to be a member of the council, uh, one of the elders of the village, but he, how dare he, doesn't like their system and is trying to find other ways of life, which they don't appreciate. Anyway, I'm now half done with it. I'm still not hooked. I'm still not really all that into it. Um, I am enjoying myself. I think the writing is beautiful. I think that the book is good. Um, like just objectively, it's a good book. It's just not, I'm not connecting with it like I want to. Um, I will say that one thing that it's doing marvelously is I really, really like how the author, Kelly Barnhill, is is incorporating the magic with the growing up. Um, things like uh, like Luna um, being turning 11 and all of a sudden she's just irritated about everything and she doesn't know why and she doesn't feel good about it. Like she feels bad for snapping at the people that she loves but at the end of the day everything irritates her. Which is just so very so very young teen. The first time she ever tells a lie and what a revelation and change that is for her. The first time she realizes that the people she loves are lying to her. Things like that um, that are incorporated just her growing up and things that kids experience as they're growing up being worked into the magic and being worked into the magic and, and the experience of being a child growing and learning and understanding the world a little bit more are are woven together really really well and I think that's at this point other than just the very very charming side characters I think that's my favorite part about this book because I think she's doing it so well. So Luna has the the revelation of magic even though she lives with magical creatures and with magic happening around her every day the understanding of magic has been blocked from her mind in order to protect her and um, that's what's going on with her and then the boy mm, I probably don't need to tell you what's going on with him present day because that's like a newish development so I won't tell you what's going on with him but I don't know this is like I feel like every time I talk about this book people say this is one of my favorites so I would love to love it too I and I do think that it's a really good book and it makes total sense to me but I I'm not I'm just not yet I don't know why um, Full Metal Alchemist. I Last week I read the first two volumes. I've now read volume three, four, five, and six. So I've just gotten through a flashback and that's where I'm going to pause and figure out my head and do a video. This will be my break for, for this section of Full Metal Alchemist. I'm loving it so much more than I did the first time around. Too much. Why do I like it this much more? The first time around I enjoyed it, but I was not liking it on this level. Um, and I, I thought that I expected like, okay, cool. This will be a nice chill read. It's like really emotional. <laughs> it's like really intense. Um, it's so well written. Uh, it's very like, 
there was so much intentionality. Every scene serves a purpose. Every scene is connected to the main points of the story or the main emotional struggles of our protagonist. And all the side characters are excellent. Their teacher and her husband are excellent, but it's everybody. I have so many favorite characters. Um, the humor I enjoy, it seems like a lot of people have mentioned in my comments that the humor doesn't connect with them. I dig it. I think it's funny. I'm laughing a lot. But also, I just think that the themes of the story, the core of what the story is, discussing alchemy and then discussing things through the, um, through the mechanics of alchemy, and then how each scene kind of emphasizes and elevates that. I'll explain it all. I'm, my review is going to be spoiler filled, so we'll we'll dig into what I'm talking about. But it's just so well plotted where we're not doing any meandering. Even, even scenes that when I read this the first time, I thought certain scenes were side tangents. And I was like, why did we even do this? And now reading it this time, I'm like, oh my golly, this is so intentional. This is so purposeful. And I feel that way about every scene. And I'm just... I'm really enjoying it. It's both light and just easy to fly through and also like, ouch. <laughs> Why do mangas hurt me so much? Why is that your goal? Books too. What's wrong with authors? Why do you hate me? Anyway, there we are. I'm going to be pausing this so that I can go back through it and write up notes and do a video and film ed edit that it'll be about a week before I get back to this. I'm going to finish this, hopefully also start Red Country and get into the next arc of Vinland Saga. So, going to be a good week. Kind of far away. Oh no! I finished The Girl Who Drank the Moon. I was really not sold on this book until about the last, oh, until about the last quarter of the book. Um, you know, it was good. It's really well written, very atmospheric. There's really nothing to complain about. I just wasn't into it that much um, until the last quarter and then everything came together and it was like my symbolism loving themes loving heart was so into how the different personal struggles of each character including the <laughs> really abstract odd characters how they all just converged it was beautiful um, the the relationships with Luna, our main character, and the different relationships with, that she had, um, the relationships that she grew up with, the ones that she lost, the way that that all came together as well. It was really just, it was so beautiful. <laughs> I don't have a bad thing to say about the way this story ended. Um, it made the whole reading experience worth it. So I totally understand why people love this book so hard. Um, I will be keeping this one to read with my kiddos when they're a little bit older because I think that this is a really awesome story. Um, it's a really good one for kiddos. Then I started Red Country. I'm only a chapter in and I'm just so happy to be here. I'm so happy to be here. It, you know, it's really a crime. Someone who enjoys uh, Joe Abercrombie's writing as much as I do and character work and like basically everything he does that I, it's taken me so long to pick up his next book. I think it's just because people people talk down about Red Country so much that it, I, I, keep, I keep putting it off uh, when I shouldn't. I mean, I may not like it nearly as much as any of his other books, but I feel good in this first chapter. <laughs> I'm so dramatic. Why don't you get a man shy? Don't like men much, I guess. 
You don't like anyone much. They started it. All of them? Enough of them. I just, I just love his dialogue. I love his characters. I think that they all have such distinct, interesting personalities and I think he's funny. I love his prose. I just really like Abercrombie. I like his writing a lot and I like his covers a lot. So here I am, one chapter into Red Country, way too excited for how, how little I've read, but that's the update on that. I've also read um, the first several chapters of the next Vinland Saga arc, the second arc. Oh my goodness. Have we changed tones? Um, wow. I will say that of all the different directions that this story could have gone at the end of the first arc, it, I didn't guess this one. And also I will say, oh, have th how things have changed. So that's, that's the... All the turntables. Oh, I should mention I'm loving it. Not things have not changed in a negative way for me. Just like narratively, we're oh. we're looking at it. We're looking at some different things. But from my perspective, I love it. I mean, you know, Vinland Saga isn't e an easy story to read. It's very intense. But I love. I'm enjoying myself so much. I'm already completely invested in how the turntables have. You can trust me. I won't let you down. I promise. He had left a trail of broken promises across half the circle of the world, after all. One extra would hardly keep him out of heaven. 150 pages into Red Country. I'm enjoying it so much. For a Joe Abercrombie, <laughs> this is slow. Which, if you're an Abercrombie fan, you know, well, that must be really slow. Because Abercrombie, he's not focused on plot, you know? Like, he's... He's just trying to, um, he writes characters and he writes character relationships and he writes um, incredible battle scenes, action scenes, amazing environmental draw you in kind of prose. Um, I love Joe's writing and being back in Red Country, being back in a story of his that is widely considered one of his weakest, it kind of just reminds me how much of a comfort read Joe Abercrombie is. He hits that sweet spot for me where I feel like he, he, so many of his lines really just hit me perfectly without, like they're profound without trying too hard to be profound. It doesn't feel like the book is trying to be profound, but it is. Like there's a lot of scenes that I just want to, just want to chew on. Um, the characters just feel so real and so different from each other. This is a story where a lot of uh, previous characters are back, are coming back, are re-entering the scene. Characters that I haven't seen for a while that I'm so happy to be hanging out with. Um, there's one character in particular that I'm, every page he's on, I'm so happy he's here. Okay, it says on the description that he's here, so I can tell you that Casca is back. Casca is back. Um, there are characters that are re-entering the scene that I'm so happy to be hanging out with. There's one character that we don't know at the beginning who we're with. And there's kind of hints that we probably know this character. There's hints of who it might be, but we don't know. And the narrative doesn't tell us who it is until we the readers get to figure out who we're spending time with before the story actually states it, which is so much fun. And when I figured out who it was, I got so excited and man, it's almost like being with a different character. I mean, this is 
This is later. I haven't seen him in a long time. So seeing him re-enter the stage and just be very, very different from the man that I have known is really interesting. New characters are coming in that I love as well. I just, from a character perspective, from a prose perspective, from a draw me into the story perspective, he is like right in that sweet spot for me. Um, anyway, back to the pacing thing. Even for a Joe book, this one's slow. Uh, also, very not very action heavy, um, at least where I am. Just not a lot of action has happened. Um, so we'll see how it picks up, we'll see how I feel. I definitely am not, I don't love it as much as I love all his other books, but like the heroes I really didn't love in the beginning and it came together really well. So we'll see, we'll see. I was really turned off by the prospect of following a Western setting, uh, which is pretty much the only thing I've heard about this. It's his weak weakest book or one of his weakest and it's a Western. That's what I've heard about this book. And while that's true, it's still Joe, you know what I mean? So it's still, it's still great. I'm having a really good time. I've also read a little bit deeper into Vinland Saga. I'm keeping it spoiler free still at this point. Um, I am loving seeing these characters, much like in Red Country, I'm loving seeing these characters in a completely different stage of their life, in a completely different headspace. It's like there, there are certain characters that we're revisiting that if I didn't know their name, I wouldn't know them. I wouldn't realize it was them because because of how much they've changed in the most organic, fantastic, amazing way. Um, yeah, it's intense. I'm loving seeing this setting, this time period, this um, situation from another angle. I'm really, really, really appreciating that and it's fantastic. I'm still in the setup stuff. We've just met where I am. We've just met the most important person on the farm. Hopefully that, hopefully you know what I'm talking about. So we're still real early on and I love it. We'll talk more about it when I get further in, but just know that the second arc from the get go is incredible just like the first arc from the beginning was incredible. My goodness, so many good stories. So that's what I've been reading and it's awesome. I'm having a great time and so I shall read some more. I hope whatever you're reading this week is a great time as well. Feel free to chat with me more about any of these books if you've read them, if you plan to read them. I'll have a review up, spoiler filled review for these guys um, next week. I'll see you again soon. Bye.